Are ghosts real? Several recent encounters suggest there might be more things in heaven and earth than we can dream of. So are werewolves just a Hollywood creation, or do half-man, half-wolf creatures really exist? Now, tonight, we kick off our Conspiracy Theory Month series, which was a... The legend of the vampire actually goes back for centuries, and it exists in some form or another in almost every culture. In fact, some people believe the first vampire story was in the Bible. Well, for decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments have been taking them seriously all along. Try and clear up an ancient mystery with the help of a common veterinarian who says she can prove that Bigfoot exists and that he's related to all of us. New reports by pilots coming forward over the weekend saying they've had multiple mid-air encounters with high-flying, fast-moving objects. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to another episode and the return episode of Celestial Oddities Pair of Normal Guys podcast. I am your host, Garrett Jagaman. Well, and I'm your co-host, Daniel James. And we're glad to have you listening tonight. We did take a few months off, as you guys have probably noticed. We've had other projects to finish up, a few other things that we were working on, and just, just a lot happening with 2020, as I'm sure you guys and gals out there can relate to. It's been a rough and crazy year. But we are back with two episodes this month, two episodes next month, and continuing you know, forward as true Celestial Oddities fashion. So uh, make sure you tune into all past episodes, and you can click the like, share, and follow button. Also on this episode, um, make sure you do so as well, whether you're listening on Spreaker, iTunes, you know, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Amazon, wherever you want to listen to online podcasts, we are at. Um, so make sure you click those buttons, get us around. The more that you do that, the more that it moves us up the podcast community rankings, more people that discover the show, and ultimately the more that we can continue to do with the show. We will be and usually do bring you, you know, roughly two episodes to three episodes per month, depending upon the month. So make sure you jump back through our archives. We have a lot of different uh, material for a lot of different folks. Tonight is no different. Daniel, ever dream of this guy? Gee, let me see that picture. Let me look at... Oh, I think I have seen him before. What a strange topic. I mean, something that... You originally brought to my attention. I had heard about it. I hadn't really um, read much about it. And I started looking into it and was really surprised at the numbers and how many people have said that they've seen this face and this specific face, that he's talked to them, that he's given advice actually and helped them with their life, that he seems to be some mysterious prophet that comes forward and just helps random people across the planet. You know. So let me give you folks out there a little bit of a background about what we're talking about tonight. The caption you'll see online a lot is, Ever Dream This Man. In January 2006 in New York, the patient of a well-known psychiatrist draws the face of a man that has been repeatedly appearing in her dreams. In more than one occasion, that man has given her advice on her private life. The woman swears she has never met the man before in her life. That portrait lies forgotten on the psychiatrist's desk for a few days until one day another patient recognizes that face and says, that's the man that often visits me in my dreams. He also claims he has never seen the man in his waking life. The psychiatrist decides to send the portrait to some of his colleagues that have patients with reoccurring dreams. Within a few months, four patients recognize the man as a frequent presence in their own dreams. All the patients refer to him as this man. From January 2006 until today, at least 2,000 people have claimed that they have seen this man in their dreams in many cities all over the world. From Los Angeles, Berlin, Beijing, Rome, Barcelona, Stockholm, Paris, New Delhi, Moscow, and etc. At the moment, there is no ascertained relation to common traits amongst the people that have dreamed of seeing this man. Moreover, no living man has ever been recognized as resembling the man of the portrait by the people who have seen this man in their dreams. That is directly off of thisman.org, which is a site dedicated to this specific phenomena. Um, fascinating. What are, what are your thoughts, Dan? Well, my partner Lauren had come with me with the idea to look into this because it's definitely esoteric. It's definitely, I would say, paranormal. It's definitely spiritual. It's definitely metaphysical. I'm not exactly 
sure where I weigh in on this yet. Um, there's so many ways I can sort of approach what this whole phenomenon is from my own metaphysical perspective and from my understanding of how the power of suggestion works and also, you know, how the collective consciousness works. Um, there's a couple ways we can really approach it. It is so strange. I mean, I can tell you that I've never seen this man. I personally have not, you know, but when Lauren, sh she pulled up the picture of him, uh, which is apparently the way that she explained it to me was that like, you could, you could show somebody a picture of this man and say, have you ever seen this man before? And there's supposed to be this kind of like, sort of like a uh, wide scale phenomenon that kicks in where people can almost they're, they're for a minute. Like you look at it. I did. I looked at it for a long minute and he seemed familiar at first. And I was like, wait, have I seen this man before? Is this like a famous person or do I know him from like, maybe like a dream or something? And I really had to sit down and question if I'd ever saw this man before, because he does look familiar at first glance. It feels like somebody that you probably have seen before, but then the more you look at it, he has a very general appearance in the image. And then I started getting in like meta about it. And I'm like, well, I wonder if there's some sort of like egregor to this being, or if it's almost like the power of suggestion where it's like, well, psychologically speaking if somebody comes to you with this random image and they're like hey have you ever seen this man and they show you the picture at first glance you're you're almost influenced to say yes this is the way i felt i'm speaking for myself here the way i felt was like am i supposed to say yes like I, does do does everybody know this person does, so, is this a common thing so yeah and you're, then you're you're thinking that it triggers something like a common response in you and yes. then when everyone else seems like they're seeing it it almost as is that power of suggestion you're like yeah yeah i seen him you might yeah. not even be consciously understanding that you're doing that but it triggers right. something and you do, yes. you follow that current yeah and... the current that's perfect i love the way you describe that cuz that's how i felt what that's what i'm talking about is okay. how how did i feel what was my process when she showed me the picture like I felt like the power of suggestion sort of influencing me to say, yes, I have, because he looks general enough. He looks familiar enough that like you probably have. So it just makes more sense socially to be like, you know, knee jerk response is like, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. And then what happens is, you know, we sort of self fulfill that response as well. And you start trying to qualify it. Like, I know I've seen him somewhere. Where was it? Was it, is he like a, a movie star? Is he from like the fifties or sixties? Cause he's got like that old timey kind of look. Um, and I'm sitting here trying to like really validate my response when I told her, I was like, I, I think I have. Yeah, I think so. But then I, more, I thought about it. I had to go back and say, no, no, I have never seen this man, but now I want to know why I thought I did. Okay. So I think that's the, that's the discussion tonight is like, why a, are people really seeing this man? And, and is he coming to people in dreams? That's what I want to hear from you about. And then B, is he more of like one of those sort of collective egregors where it's like the power of suggestion and the power of influence can sort of trick people into believing that they've seen him before, but they haven't. And if that's the case, if he doesn't really exist as like an entity or a being, then what is the purpose of that whole um paranormal sort of phenomenon of instilling like the false memory of this person or like the false remembrance of having seen him before like from a picture or from a movie or from television like I'm, i was literally sitting there for a minute trying to figure out where i'd seen him hmm. because i felt like i should say yeah i've seen him before because he generally looks familiar and then i'm like okay well why does he look familiar to me even though I, I i realize now i'm going to admit i haven't seen him I've never seen this guy before in the picture, but my knee jerk response was, yes, I have seen him. So there's definitely something very strange about the whole topic. Am I right? I think so. I, I mean, you're looking at it also from one perspective of, of suggestive, you know, I don't want to say, I guess, yeah, just suggestion, um, power of suggestion. I was going to take about it a different way, but you're looking at it from, you know, the side of, consciously you are going with the current like i said now what about an unconscious or subconscious level where you see the face 
No, I don't think I've seen that. You, you, you forget about it. It's just a random face. Then who knows how much later it is, or maybe you don't even realize that this was anything. But after mm-hmm. talking about the, the conversation, in your sleep he appears. The power mm-hmm. suggestion caused the figment of your imagination to create him as a response in your dreamlike state. Right. And that's and that's could be what's causing the phenomenon because it's a, a mass power of suggestion because once it hit the the internet waves and said you know tons of people were seeing this even if at that point it was 150 people well, 150 people have seen this guy that's enough to cause a chain reaction of something's off here but then when it hit the internet and you have people all over the world seeing it forgetting they're seeing it. Um, or, you know, like I said, it just somehow they, they cross it on a quick ad, boom, it pops into their brain and it spreads more and then more and more people are seeing. I think it could be almost like a mass hypnosis power yes. suggestion, like where you don't even realize it's doing it to you. Somehow it clicks something um, and you become a part of that, almost like a trend almost. Yeah, like a movement. And and it it's a social thing, honestly, because we're social creatures and whether whether we want to be accepted subconsciously in a social situation could be part of it or whether we all just don't really trust our memory. There's a lot to be said here about it. But one thing I want to challenge, if anyone's listening right now, wherever you are, pull up your phone, pull up your computer and just do a quick Google image search on, have you seen this man and look at the dude's face? Like I'm looking at it right now on our Facebook event page. And it's like, as I look at him, it's creepy not because he looks strange or, or creepy, but because just staring at the image, you f- you kind of still feel like maybe you've seen him before. And I can't explain why I have that f- sensation or that feeling, but there is a familiarity to him. And that's why I'm saying, like, I don't know if this is like a collective consciousness thing where, you know, we as, as beings are sort of tapping into the to the familiarity of it through each other. And that influences our 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 perception of it or okay not to be a skeptic let's be fair about this what's the other side of this coin here where you mentioned that there has been um that he comes in people's dreams and maybe he's prophetic or is he delivering messages um what was that you were mentioning about there were several accounts of and i wasn't everybody but it was several accounts of when they seen this man in their dreams he would like talk to them and and help lead them a certain way, give them some type of advice, guidance, um, a guidance of sorts. So I mean, it makes you think of some type of of uh, whether you want to call it angelic, whether you want to call it higher intelligence. Mm-hmm. It seems like something is appearing to these people in some cases, at least, trying to lead them a certain way. But is that also a piece of your own subconscious talking mm-hmm. to you? telling you what you really want to hear but it does it in the form that you can, you're not ready yet sometimes you don't listen to yourself if you know you're the one saying it mm-hmm. that's true and I, I as self-disciplined as i am with my spiritual beliefs i'm the same way sometimes yeah you know it's, it's crazy man i don't know i just it, when you do look at it i'm looking at it again right now i've looked at it you know a couple dozen times it does have some type of just strange he obviously is an odd looking man but there's a familiarity to it well did and... you look at the color version no, I'm oh, kind of scared to. You know, you need to Google up right now. Um, All right. Where someone filled it in to be flesh tone and it looks like a real person. I'm doing it. And it weirds me out. Like, at the same time I look at it and I'm like, okay, like I, I see this man, <laughs> but it, it's giving me the willies, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to see this man in my dreams. Stay out of my dreams, brother. Have yeah. you seen this man um, in your dreams? Yeah, it's so weird. Well, and the other thing, as you mentioned, is is in, with a magical perspective to it, with ceremonial work, and I know this is a little bit different, but when you're doing ceremonial magic, you can summon forces or even in some cases egregores, as you, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't always have to be an old biblical character. There are things like this that is, is because enough people have seen it looked at it you're giving it your your fear you're giving it your happiness your indifference your whatever every single Mm. person in the world that's looked at this guy has now given him some form of energy yeah whether he's real or not and enough of that gathered you know out there will form a a independent egregore of sorts that 
is its own individual thing. And a lot of people say that's far fetched. It's really not. When you put enough energy, belief, and, and emotions into something time and time again, people all over the world over whether a couple months or decades, like some movie characters and things, you almost create an egregore of sorts it, yeah. of that it, person. Yeah. And, and, and when it's, it develops it, life. Yeah, and some of these characteristics and things you can actually, you know, summon or work with. It sounds crazy, but it's absolutely true. No, that's not really um, something I partake in myself, but I've read extensively about people being able to summon weird forces. There was a guy I seen in a, ch- a chat group the other day was talking about how you can actually be able to contact sources like, you know, if you wanted to reach out, you know, Pinhead from Hellraiser. Mm-hmm. These things have become, I'm like, I, you know, I don't know if I believe, to an extent you can. I, to an extent you can get a force, but I don't know if the character itself exists. That's where I start to wonder if you can, if it is all just our subconscious, just like this, yeah. this gentleman. Yeah, you know, um, I'll just slide this weird little truth bomb in here. Um, freak people out uh, if anybody has heard about the concept of like reptilians and like the the man eating flesh eating reptilians that they say are hidden within the government and stuff. Well, I studied that concept for a long time, hidden hidden reptilian agenda. And although beings like that have existed um, throughout, you know, our 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 time and space, everything exists on in some level shape or form from what i understand in my recent studies is those concept of like negative reptilians they're actually in egregor themselves and that the the bloodthirsty evil ones that we you know conspiracy theorists study about the ones in lurking in the shadows and controlling our government and stuff those are thought forms they're they're thought forms that have developed power and manifested physically and become like standalone entities from the power of of the group consciousness that has heard about that as a concept and then buys into it, whether consciously or subconsciously, we are very powerful creators, quantumly and energetically. And then you what you do is you sort of like fuel like a machine, you fuel these concepts with the power of your belief and they literally become real. They do. And it's, you know, I mean, that's really in essence what magic is, is you're taking your willpower, your beliefs, your energy, your focus, and you are making mm-hmm. a change happen that seems impossible. But this world is much more than what you see on an everyday scale. You have to peel behind the curtain and peer behind it because this is only one dimension. There's a lot of them and you can affect things differently than you realize you can, but you have to have the focus to do so. And when people, like I said, are all focusing on this, what if, what if it is a man I seen, then that can create a, a inner being that somehow mm-hmm. mentally and when on our sleep state comes around and sees us another thought would be radical enough imagine you know we look at the concept of all coming from one source we're all mm-hmm. individual fractal beings of the god force okay mm-hmm. well what if we are all seeing this man in our dreams or these people are because they're seeing a reflection of who they actually are and that, that could be is the original being that we could be are it. this man and it makes you wonder what came first, the image and the question of have you seen this man or your belief in the concept that you could have. And then it and then it makes you wonder, well, does it really exist now? Does he really exist now in dream form or spiritually or even physically now because of my awareness of it? Did it ever exist before somebody asked me the question? It's trippy. I think a lot of our viewers are probably like, wow, man, you guys are deep right now. I'm, I lost you seven minutes ago, but stick with us, folks. No, there's you know, a lot of possibilities that it could be, and I, I know that uh, I, I sure as fuck don't know. Um, it, 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 it puzzles me because there are things that we know without – being told so like i said if people are seeing this all over the world there has to be some type of connection to it that we are not seeing and i know it's supposed to just be a hoax but i've seen other things like this happen where people all seem to have experienced the same thing individually but all ultimately is the same thing right um it just makes you wonder it does it's 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 curious and um i also want to let people know that we don't exactly uh, – we're not exactly promoting one specific 
uh, definition or meaning to this concept. What we're doing is we're, we're having an open discussion about is it real? Is it is it a thought form? Is it uh, is is it an ascended master? You know, is it is sort of like spirit guide here to help us? Is it something agenda based? You know, kind of like what do you guys think? What are what are your opinions about it? We want to sort of promote the thought. We want to promote the mystery. Is what we want to do. Because um, like for me, I think sometimes like de- defining what something so strange like this is conclusively is less of the the point and more of the point for me the 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 more entertaining part of this is <laughs> speculating you know and is asking questions and having a discussion about it so i quite frankly can't quite put my finger on it after studying it and talking to you about it i still don't know i don't know what this thing is what this guy is yeah, it's weird cuz it, what's really strange is when the time period that it came out was i mean it hasn't been around long i mean long enough it's been 14 years since it popped up but it it okay. became something they noticed in 2006 that's when it really had hit gotten gained traction so i'd imagine probably for the couple of years leading up to that because i mean for all these patients for them to be able to link six patients over that short amount of time that all have seen within that same network then that means that it's been going on for quite a while mm-hmm. or it was saturated mm-hmm. to that one area and then moved but it would make me believe that that had been probably going on around the world for a while for that point. And then whenever they started getting it buzzed, then people all over start saying, holy shit, like, yeah, I've seen that. So I would imagine probably maybe 2003, 2004, but why all all of a sudden after the millennium, you know what I mean? Like like 2003 range, all of a sudden this thing pops out. But so... never in history. There's two ways that it could have come into the collective consciousness and to our awareness on the internet and through, you know, individuals who have claimed to experience this thing in their dreams or whatever. Um, It could have been planted. If there's anything nefarious or agenda based about this particular entity and what it means to us um, on the surface level, it could have been planted. Somebody could have written the whole thing like like a story. They could have created the character on paper and given him a backstory and written a narrative, and then they make a blog about it, make a YouTube video about it, post around online, share stories about that they had that they saw this thing and they experienced this thing, and then through the power of suggestion and and in, you know people being influenced by it, it could have spread like a like a mind virus, and then that makes me wonder like why. What what is the reason for its creation and what purpose does it serve? So as an alternative to that, if it didn't come through, like maybe it's it's not man made and it's not like the secret agenda thing that sort of like trip people out, then maybe it is some sort of like spirit guide or ascended master, or maybe it's extraterrestrial, and it's reaching people through spirit through the dream realm um, to to sort of like get involved and and help help out. You know, like just like a random uh, passenger who lends a helping hand. And and, I, and that being said, I wasn't able to find anything inherently negative about it. Yeah, there really wasn't anything that had this guy painted in a bad light. This weird looking fella shows up in your dreams and sometimes it randomly helps you out like a good guy. And then he, he vanishes and you probably never see him again. I mean, it, it's, it's awkward, but it's nothing has been, male, you know, malevolent about it. Um, something you said that's interesting. And I had thought about this concept as well is if you said it in a little bit of a different light. And I like that. What if they were be able to program an experiment to see how the population would react to it because i know i've done that myself and it sounds sick but i've taken conspiracy theory before and taken someone who i knew fit the right personality that wasn't into it yeah Yeah. but you knew you could get them and then i dropped some bombshells on them and then i planted those seeds i watered them and then i stood back and just watched how it grew and without me having any other interference after that couple months later the person's a fucking nut job and they're like uh, they're looking way into way into conspiracy theories and it opened their eyes and it's like wow and i did it as a social experiment and it worked um so something like this you could do 
on a much larger scale, maybe not for any certain purpose, but just to see if it could be done as a training program. Um, can we put this guy's face out there in the power of suggestion, see how many people will truly believe that they had an interaction with this guy, but they didn't. A placebo I, illusion. Yeah, that key word, placebo. So it's like, and it's and people are so easily influenced and swayed by things like this in social settings. So I, being a little bit more conspiratorial myself, I'm somebody who questions everything and I don't generally take anything for face value at all. Um, and I, I'm, I'm just personally more apt to believe that it is some sort of planted um, – planted concept and that being said i think a lot of stuff is you know because look how easy uh, a young person can go to a movie and go to a horror film and be terrified by what they saw in the movie because on some level they believe they think that's real they think that 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 can really happen to them and they cannot differentiate from the movie and as entertainment and real life it's a common problem with kids and so Imagine what like our government or, or our leadership could do to our whole country or our whole planet with the power of just information. Like if you have the right platform like the news and you want to get people thinking in a certain direction and influence their own creator abilities to actually manifest things, you put information out. You plant a story, you place it as fact, you state it backed by a science, you know, a PhD, Dr. Gregory Sanders from, you know, Harvard, Yale and the study of 1979 proved that this one thing is, is real based on these studies. And if you put that on the news or a, a mainstream platform, so, somewhere where a lot of influential people go to get their information, they're more apt to believe it right away. And then it spreads and spreads and spreads in that fashion. So this is just a concept I'm talking about. But with this particular being, not that I haven't ever experienced it myself because I haven't, but not because I haven't. I'm just less apt to believe that it is this sort of like wide scale phenomenon that people are experiencing individually. Um, whereas like I know that I felt influenced by a, a power that I can't describe when I looked at his face for the first time to say, yes, I think I have seen him before. And it, and it had to, t I had to do a little bit of like, like I had to sit with it for a few minutes to, to realize, you know what? No, I haven't. So why did I feel influenced to say yes? I don't know. Um, so I'm not here trying to invalidate anyone's experience if they've seen this being or had an interaction with him and even or moreover a positive one like maybe he loaned you 20 bucks or helped you change a tire on the side of a rainy night if that's if you've been there let us know if you've experienced something with this being this is what we want to hear about because because we're just theorizing here absolutely we like to talk discussions of all different ideas and debate back and forth and agree back and forth, as you know, with our show. Now, if you are listening in right now and you missed the beginning of the show, make sure you click uh, the download button or the like button because it will allow you to, after the show being done, to download that episode. Either take it with you on the go or stream it. But you can't rewind back now, so listen till the end and then jump back and listen again. If you have any suggestions of what you would like to hear on the show things that you would like to see differently on the show, anything. You just want to be a part of the show. Um, you know, Message us at celestialoddities at gmail.com. That's celestialoddities at gmail.com. Or like our Facebook group or page and uh, interact with us. We love to talk to you. Dan and I love to hear what experiences you've had um, with the paranormal and supernatural, what ideas and theories you might have on this specific topic, and anything in between. Yeah, man, I don't know. It's it, it's it's definitely, or did they find the exact face that they could they could use against you? Is it so normal looking? Just this average guy that's forgettable with a balding head and and you know the, the facial hair kind of they have drawn up for him. Is it like a perfect drawing of something that ninety nine percent of the people out there just think looks familiar? Like, oh yeah, I've seen mm -hmm. I've seen one of him before. I've seen, right. I've seen this guy before. The generalized kind of feature the features are generalized enough that he's familiar on first glance. Man, that's crazy. We need to figure out a good code like that and put it out of the airwaves. Listen to our show. Have you heard this show before? 
Sure, I've heard that show before. <laughs> it's like, like, like oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's crazy. <laughs> But you know it's out there. Like I said, there's a lot of different realities. I always look at it. I look thought about it from the Matrix perspective of what I was telling you the other night um, when we finished up our documentary together. Which, folks, we will be talking about next episode a little bit about some projects that we have worked on in 2020 mm-hmm. and this year overall, which has been just a shit box. Busy. Yeah, busy and fun. just just crazy. But you know what? I will say this year, and I've said it to everybody, is horrible as this year has been as trying and nerve wracking and just wow it has also been a heavy year for transformation of life of just doors closing other ones opening transitioning of things happening not saying good or bad just a changeover this year has been a changeover big time man i mean in the last six months i've done so much shadow work in my personal life that it's it's like I've let go of like ego based pursuits that meant so much to me for like 10, 15, 20 years. I've just totally let go and walked away from. And um, I've also uh, had great new interesting doors open for me that, that are prosperous and interesting to investigate. Like I think like you mentioned it, it's just been a really transformative year. Yeah. It's a year of growth. I think, I think that, you have certain pivotal points in life. You're always growing. You're always aging. But there's those spots that you hit that it's like a booster. For some reason, that that year, that six months, that two year, just that little section is like, whew, and mm-hmm. all this stuff happens. And then it like goes back to normal life again. Then all the stuff happens. It's those changeover years, those transitioning years. Now, the odd thing about this one is that it pretty much happened to all of us. So it wasn't like, yeah. oh, here and there, I've got a few people that just, no, it was the entire population in one way or another. Whether this was a year of absolute shit for you, an amazing year and a different one, it doesn't matter. I don't think there's one person that can look at 2020 and say, man, this hasn't been just one crazy transitional year. Big time, you know, it's like a shadow work. That's the way I put it. You know, people being faced with, looking at their shadow and clearing out old energy and old density, like on a collective way, we're all being faced, whether it's like with like the, the black lives matter thing, or whether it's the, the COVID thing, or um, we've all been challenged the, or the, or the, the election, you know, all of these major paradigms that like have affected people on a, on a wide scale, it forces us into shadow work and investigating this self and uh looking into what we agree with and what we don't agree with what we resonate with what we don't resonate with what we're willing to take what we're not willing to take and um it's affected all of us you know we could we could call it ascension we could call it an awakening uh whatever your definitions and your terms are i think that we've all been called to just do some serious work on ourselves and our personal lives and um if anything, uh, as we come here towards you know the end of the year, that's something that we can all sort of reflect on. I agree. I mean, it's it's something we had to face. I think because we're we're all going to tackle the world anew when things eventually go back to normal. If they go back to normal, if they go back to the life that we once knew. Obviously, a little bit different because we have this new knowledge of what we all experienced, and that'll always change us in some, you know, former fa- former fashion. But it, when we go back to the regular world, we're gonna all go about it either very anxious to jump back out, excited, smarter, more level headed. It don't matter. Like everyone's gonna go at it full mm-hmm. force. Like, all right, let's get back to the world. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. It's like it's it's like a reboot. Like someone hit the reset button, but we don't know we've been reset. It's just we're all kind of building up our our characters right now. We're all building up our scene, and then we're gonna hit the start button, and the game actually begins. And then mm-hmm. we you know, send everybody out in there, see how it all works out. But it's uh, it's pretty crazy, man. I don't know. Like I said, it's been a pivotal year for me. I mean, from walking away from the company to starting a different radio show to us doing more working on the documentary we'll be talking about next, you know, next week or two weeks from now, rather. Um, December 22nd, right? 20, what, December 22nd, folks. 8 yeah, to guys. 9 p.m. Yeah, uh, folks. We have like a catching up on Daniel and Garrett um, episode on December 22nd right there before the holidays. 
Absolutely. You sure to catch that? Yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Right around Christmas, we'll be talking about the year and then starting a new one. You can catch us a couple times a month. We'll get back on it, folks. Like I said, with it being such a crazy year, we did want to take a couple months to kind of focus on things we had going on to also finish up projects and then just come back anew. So these first two episodes, you know, here in December are really going to be just talking, conversating, you know, shooting the breeze a little bit. But we will get back to deeper com- conversations and topics. We know that you guys have asked for a lot of different things last year, and we hit several of them and throughout this year. But we want to hear from you and hear what you want to suggest to us for upcoming episodes. So it doesn't matter what it is. If it's supernatural, paranormal, strange, or bizarre, let us know. We'll look it over. We'll even put it up to some voting for you know, people on Facebook and some of our other platforms to vote on it, and we'll pick an episode and go over everything. We are going to be bringing on some more interviews throughout the next year, and uh, Daniel and I will be interviewing some some interesting folks in the paranormal side and supernatural. So hopefully you guys are excited for a 2021, you know, full force hit to the face of Celestial Oddities. Got a comment here. Magic practitioners come out your dark caves in hidden places. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Come, come at us. The, come at us. Come get it. That was um, Raw Vega. I had him actually is on the show. Okay. What's up, buddy? Um, had him on Knights of the Nephilim. Folks, for you out there listening that might not have heard my other show, I do have a new show called Knights of the Nephilim. It's a ceremonial magic uh, podcast where we talk about all forms of theology and backgrounds in high ceremonial magic from different rituals and perspectives to different energy work. Um, and we bring on famous authors and occultists each and every episode and interview them about their books, what it is that they do. We are booked right now from now until almost the end of April of next year. So make sure you tune into that show. It's been pretty wild so far. So get it. And then, uh, Anybody else want to message us out there for the next few minutes while we're still on here before we jump off? You can hit us up at Spreaker.com or Spreaker on the Spreaker app market, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. That allows you to chat with us during the show. But we do want to obviously thank you for tuning in tonight. Daniel, any other fun things on the mind for the evening? Well, um, I just want to let let people believe whatever they believe and also be flexible to always change your opinion on what your belief is so uh take take a few minutes and research uh have you seen this man or have i seen this man it is an interesting concept it will uh pro- it will promote some thought um in the paranormal and the esoteric because it is a very strange phenomenon so um and just be flexible with your beliefs in anything in life you know what i'm saying like if you believe one thing right now own that and stand in your truth, but always be flexible to change that later. If you come into new information that challenges that old belief, um, you know, you, you, it is possible to let those things go and grow and transform with, with wherever spirit takes you. So, um, with things like this, you know, my own personal opinion is it is some sort of wide scale, sort of like thought experiment. Um, I work with, I work with non-physical astral entities i work with extraterrestrials i work with um beings that are not human and if i felt personally that this was one of those i would be more than happy to tell you i just don't have any evidence of that myself um and personally speaking my intuition says that it is something else so uh let us know what your guys' thoughts are he sent us an email you can comment right here on the live stream we love to interact with you guys, and like Garrett said, I want to reiterate, we're always open to taking suggestions on uh, other topics for further episodes, and definitely dig back through our, our database and read the titles, anything that says Pong, read read the description of the episode, and, and give, them, give our old episodes a listen, because I'll be on Facebook or I'll be on social media having conversations with people, and someone will ask a question about something we did a whole episode about. And then I'll just forward them the link and say, hey, check out check out this episode where we go in depth on that that particular topic that you're just asking about. And um, some of the stuff I'll actually say right now, I know that our episode about sleep paralysis and night terrors have actually helped a few people. 
I yeah. sent it to two or three people in the past few weeks because that that topic's been really popular on on social media. People are having all kinds of like sleep paralysis experiences recently, and so I'm forwarding these episodes to them and seeing if you know our experiences and our our perspectives on these things can help them. So uh, dig through these old episodes and and see if you can find something that would be useful to you. No, I agree because uh, we do we have, do have some really good topics out there that people have. Uh, I know talked about and I'm like yeah we already put an episode out we send it to them and they usually resonate with a pretty heavy that one specifically the night terrors and sleep paralysis was I think one of our really big hit episodes I've had several people talk to me about it and I've sent them the link or they've just heard the episode and said wow some of the things I was experiencing I heard in that episode I didn't know anyone else had ever experienced Mm -hmm. and it's in there you know that's always awesome um, when that happens uh, because it just gives validation to what it is that you have experienced and then it brings it even more real. So sometimes that can be scary, but it brings it even more real. And, um, you know, that was a heavy one. So anything like that that you want to see us talk about, we are open to all of it. We love researching. We love bullshitting. We love uh, having fans out there interact with us. So other than that, for me, that's about it. I do look forward to the 22nd to catch up on the whole year of just uh, – what we've gone through, what we got coming up, and what 2021 is going to hold for us. And other than that, folks, we love you and we appreciate you tuning in tonight. Thank you guys very much. This is uh, Daniel and Garrett signing out. We are back in action and we'll see you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. Take care and have a good night.